first and foremost, in regards to Shavuot, one of the main things that I got from it is that in reality, according to the Gemara Masechet Abu Zara, it is the most important day in history. Why? Because Chazal tells us that since Hashem came to all of the nation and offered them the Torah and they rejected it, all of the Malachim were very scared because they knew that if Am Yisrael rejects the Torah, Hashem will bring back the world to Tov Avo. Will destroy the world. Why? Because the Torah is the purpose of this world. That's why Hashem created it 974 generations before He created the world. In essence, the Jewish people were, in essence, became Jewish because of the Torah. They weren't Jewish before it. Obviously, as you've learned from Rabbi Mizrahi many, many times, before the Torah, we were Israelim. Before that, before that, we were Hebrews. But if someone else came to Mount Sinai, Chas Shalom, and accepted the Torah and we didn't, they would be the Jews. So in essence, the most important day in history is Shavuot. Now, why do we go over the Torah or at least try? Because Hashem is trying to give us a little bit of a taste of the beauty of the Torah, but in reality, we can't finish it. We can't finish the Torah, and that's why in Pirkei Avot, you'll see that it's not your obligation to finish the Torah. Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkino said to Rabbi Akiva once, you haven't come visit me in a long time. I have so much Torah to teach you. He says, how much Torah do you have? He says, if all of the water was ink, and all of the trees were pens, and all of the land was paper, it wouldn't be enough to write down the Torah that I know. And that is not even a close amount to the real Torah. What's the real Torah? Well, I'll give you an understanding of what we have. Now, we got the Torah in Mount Sinai, but as Kodarav said, we got a little bit of a lower version after our sin, but we still got the Torah. The Torah later was given from generation to generation to 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva. Unfortunately, all died. Then we were started all over again with five of Rabbi Akiva's students and Rabbi Akiva himself, all the way to today. But now, if you connect the holidays, if you go back to Pesach, it's a very important holiday. It's the Exodus. We left Egypt. We turned around history in one way that's never been done before and never will be done again. The slave turned into the master. And we go from Simcha to Simcha. Shavuot. But in the middle, we have a problem. In the middle, we have 34 days of disaster. The 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva died during this time. So what's the connection? So during one of, uh, I do a short chidush on WhatsApp and it's on uh, different uh, places that people like, is usually 15 minutes. And I tried to connect the three things. Why did Hashem take us from Simcha to Simcha, but in the middle there's a disaster? Well, first off, He wanted to tell us that the purpose of us leaving Eretz, uh, Mitzrayim is to get the Torah. Whoever didn't want to get the Torah died. As we know, at least 80% of the Israelim died in Egypt. Torah is later on. But in the middle, he wanted to explain to us what we actually have. Because if we don't know what we have, we usually don't appreciate it. So the Torah that we got, according to Mas uh, Masechet Megillah, it says that we had 55 prophets, 48 males and 7 females in our Tanakh. But in history, we had over 1.2 million prophets. So we're missing a few. Their Torah was holy too. What happened to them? Hashem told us that their Torah was only relevant, their nevoah, their prophecy actually, but it said, their prophecy was only relevant to their generation. Which means that the 55 remaining prophets, whatever came out of their mouth, every single letter that's written in the Torah is relevant to every single generation until the end of time. So no one could ever say, like the Reforms and the Conservatives and any other wicked person in between, could never say 
Hey, no, this is not relevant to today. Today you're allowed to drive because Moses didn't have a car. You're allowed to drive on Shabbat. He didn't have a car, that's why he didn't drive. You can't, you can't say that. Why? Because if Hashem said, their Torah, their Nevoah, their prophecy is relevant for all, all, all time, that's it. But now, we only have their prophecy. We only have their part of the Torah out of the 1.2 million. So already we know we're missing a bunch. And out of those 55, we got down to 24,000 students. But out of the 24,000 students, we don't have all of their Torah. We only have the Torah of six. Rabbi Akiva and his five students. So what would happen if Hashem said, you know what? It was about 700 of the greatest sages in history dying per day. We don't just mourn because we have nothing else to do. We mourn because we're missing their Torah. If you go on, for example, HebrewBooks.com, they have over 75,000 Hebrew books, holy books, for free. And it wants to download, read, and so on. And there's hundreds of thousands of different Sifre Kodesh that you could learn from. The Torah is endless. But all of what we have today is just from six people. Which means that if Hashem would have skipped one day, said, you know what, today, I'm not going to kill the 700. So we'll have a Torah of 706. Imagine how much holiness this world would have. The beauty of it is that Hashem, Hashem obviously knew that even what we have from the six, he has to practically beg us to read. <laughs> but at least now you know that when you get to Shavuot, Hashem is trying to give you a message. I only took you out of Egypt for this Torah. It's the only reason. If you didn't want the Torah, I left you there and you died in the plague of darkness, the uh, Makata dark darkness. You're going to get the Torah. But if I would have given it to you without you knowing how much it's worth, you'd get it. You'd say, yes. Nah, I like Harry Potter better. <laughs> and you move along. But now that we know how much beauty we have from the little we have, we yearn for so much that we're missing. 